Hey friends, it's Alex here again at The Code Wolf, and in this video we're going to explore just how easy it is to deploy a containerized .NET app up to the cloud into Azure Container Apps. Container Apps are an awesome feature of Azure that I really like to work with, so let's check out how this works. All right, so Azure Container Apps are actually a pretty awesome newer service on Azure and they allow you to build and deploy modern apps and microservices using serverless containers. Now, there's a few fancy buzzwords in there, but this really is a great service. It essentially provides a managed service alternative to something like Kubernetes, which can be pretty intensive to install and configure and administer to yourself if you're trying to set that up on premise. Container apps abstract away so much complexity and allow you to just deploy your containers to the cloud and easily scale them and manage them and monitor them. And it's really great for teams that want to leverage this type of functionality without that complexity. I'm going to go into a lot more depth in an overview of container apps in a different video. But for now, I just want to get started deploying an app out there with Visual Studio and seeing how easy it is to get started. In this video, we're going to use a .NET app but I'll follow up with another video that shows how to do this in JavaScript or Python using VS Code or, or some other workflow. Now, there are a couple of prerequisites to be aware of here. One is obviously you'll need to have Visual Studio installed to go through this, um, which you can download at visualstudio.microsoft.com, and you do need Visual Studio 2022 with the latest updates. The other prerequisite is that you need to install Docker Desktop. Now, I'm not going to go through this whole flow, uh, but it's fairly self-explanatory. You basically just download the version for your operating system and go through it like a normal installation. The one caveat is that you may need to enable virtualization on your BIOS settings for your motherboard if you don't have that enabled already. And it depends on your chipset and whether you have permissions on your computer to do that. But I'm going to assume if you're watching this that you're interested in working with containers and that you'll be able to do that. So you'll basically just need to have this Docker desktop app running after you've installed that because Visual Studio relies on Docker desktop for some of the container related tasks that are necessary to deploy out to Azure container apps. So once you have those set up, let's head over to Visual Studio. So over in Visual Studio, let's go ahead and create a new project. So let's go up to file new project and let's make sure to choose the ASP.NET Core web app template and choose next. And we can call this something like uh, Wolf Containers or whatever you'd like for your project name. And let's click Next. And we'll want to use .NET 6 or one of the more recent versions of .NET that can be containerized easily. And let's leave the rest of these settings default except for Enable Docker. You want to make sure that this is checked. Uh, by default, it's usually unchecked. But this adds a Docker file to our project that will be used uh, to be able to build a container image and it assists with uh, deploying that out to container apps. So Visual Studio will handle a lot of the work for us if we check that box. And so when we hit create, we can see that a Docker file is indeed added to our project. Now I'm not going to go into how Docker works in this video or everything that this file does. Uh, but just know that this is needed in order to deploy your app out to container apps, um, at least for this workflow. So in order to deploy our app, we can right click on our project and choose publish. And in the dialog, we of course want to choose Azure. So let's click next. And then let's choose Azure container apps a little bit ways down here. And if you don't see this option, you might need to update your version of Visual Studio. So this option is only available in Visual Studio 2022, and you also have to have the latest updates installed because this feature did not actually ship with this version. It was, an, it was added uh, post-launch. So just make sure you're up to date and then choose that option and click Next. And this is gonna search for existing uh, container apps out in Azure, and this subscription doesn't have any. So just make sure that you're logged in into the correct subscription in the upper right. And then let's choose create new. And this will open up another dialog with a variety of options here. Now I'm pretty zoomed in, so these windows are a little awkward, but um, on most computers this should work just fine. So first we have our container app name and Visual Studio populated a lot of these values for us by default. And for the most part, we can usually just kind of leave these if we're experimenting. Uh, this is close enough to what we wanna name the container, but just make sure these values are right, that you've uh, chosen the right subscription and that you've chosen the right resource group. 
I'm actually going to create a new resource group called uh, Code Wolf and choose OK. And I also want to change this environment location. So every container app runs in a container app environment, and this allows multiple apps to run, by, run side by side. And this can help with certain administrative tasks like networking and some uh, resource configurations and things like that. So I'm just going to choose new, and I'm going to change this that's, uh, to something that's closer to me. Um, so I'll just choose central US or something. We can also create a new Azure Log Analytics workspace. And this is just necessary for some of the, the logging and analytics for container apps, as the name implies here. And I'm also going to move that closer here. This deployment can actually take a little while, so anything that's closer to you might go a little bit faster. So then let's go ahead and click Create. Now, like I mentioned, this can take several minutes, so don't worry if this does take a bit of time. Just uh, be patient and let Visual Studio finish these tasks, and then we'll pick up when it finishes. All right, so after that finishes successfully, we'll see it in the list here in the dialog. So just make sure that that's selected and then click Next. And the last step in Visual Studio here is to create an Azure Container Registry. So a registry is where we store container images and artifacts in Azure. And this is really easy to create. So let's just click on this uh, Create New button over here. And for, again, we can mostly leave the defaults here. Um, I'm actually not going to change anything here. The, the name and the uh, resource group and everything are correct. So go ahead and create that. And this again can take a moment, but it's usually much faster than uh, the container apps was. All right, so that completed successfully as well. So just make sure that registry is selected and then click Finish. And then Visual Studio will ask us if we want to enable some uh, permissions to continue this publish. So just hit Yes. And this should close when uh, the publishing profile finishes. All right, so when that finishes, Visual Studio will load this publishing profile for us. Now, a lot of developers make the mistake of thinking their app has actually been published when that dialog closes and they see this page. However, we actually have to click Publish in the upper right here for the app to be fully published out to Azure. Now, those services did get created by Visual Studio. It's just that our app hasn't actually been deployed up to that app yet. So after that completes, make sure to hit Publish here, and then we'll have to wait one more time for Visual Studio to finish this process. And again, at this point, this is where you will need Docker Desktop installed or else you'll see an error message when we try to do this publishing process. So just make sure that that's installed and running. All right, so when your publish finishes, your app should launch in the browser and we're greeted with our site. This is running in a container on container apps and Visual Studio took care of a lot of work for us. Now, in my case, that initial publish actually took quite a while. It took a few minutes. Uh, but subsequent publishes should be a bit faster, and just know that it is taking care of a lot of things for you. Um, so it just takes a moment to get all that set up. So let's explore what actually was created for us in Azure. So if we go over to our portal and search for container apps, we can see that our Wolf Containers was created here. So let's click on that. And on the overview page, we can see there's all kinds of settings for container apps. And obviously this could fill many videos and go pretty in depth. For now, we're mostly interested in just a few items here. One is that you can always get back to your site by just opening up this link over on the right. And the other item I wanna look at right now, we can find it down under scale. So if you remember, we talked about how container apps are serverless and easily scalable. So if we go into this page, we can see that right now we have a minimum and a maximum of one replica. So we have one container running. Well, let's say that we wanna scale this up. Let's say we know there's gonna be a lot more traffic than this and one container isn't going to cut it. We can just click edit and deploy. And then under scale, we can simply bump this up to as many containers as we need really. So we can bump this up to four or five, and this sets the minimum on the left and the maximum on the right. And container apps will just sort of automatically handle um, moving between that number of instances as it needs. So I'm just gonna leave this at four and five and say create. And it's actually gonna deploy a new revision for us as soon as we choose that option. And this part actually usually happens pretty fast. Uh, container apps can scale up and down really quickly. So let's just give that a second to finish. And we can see that did complete successfully. Now, if we go back to our overview, and if we were to launch out to our site again, 
Of course, this is still just going to look the same on the surface. We would need a more sophisticated app or sophisticated analytics or metrics to actually test, uh, you know, which containers are being hit and how that scaling is working and everything like that. But of course, container apps does have plenty of monitoring features. So we could use log streams and metrics and all kinds of options here to actually explore the behavior of those containers. But again, another video. One last item I do want to look at is the container registry. If you remember in Visual Studio, we created a registry to hold our image and the artifact for our container here. So if we go up to the search bar here and we just click down to container registries or search for it up here. But if we navigate over here, we can see we do have a container registry. So our, our wolf containers registry. And when we navigate into that, this is another great service from Azure that will handle managing all of those artifacts and images for us. So if we were to scroll down to the repository, we can see the wolf containers repositories that we specified in Visual Studio. And when we click on that, sure enough, there is the latest image with our tag and the last modified date. And this is what container apps can pull from when we want to deploy a new revision. So I just want to point out that that was created and that Visual Studio completed all that work for us. I hope this has given you a good idea of just how easy it is to initially deploy this app out to container apps so that we can start messing around with some of these features and just becoming familiar with this great service. I'm going to be delivering a lot more videos on this service and how to go in more depth with this. So if you enjoyed this content, please hit subscribe and I'll see you next time right here at the Code Wolf. Thanks again.